Cool. No worries. Uh, glad to have you. Um, so, Elmer, do you want to say anything? Uh, if, if not, we'll go and get started. Yeah, let's get started. Here. Okay, thanks. Um, so, thank you, everyone, for joining us uh, today. Uh, and we're recording this uh, post on our website. Um, but basically, we wanted to talk uh, and have some discussion, a conversation uh, about the value of Vetcoin and really sort of what, uh, where we, where we're going overall, but then where we're going, where we want to go specifically at Vetcoin and what does it mean, uh, mean to all of us. And so uh, I've got uh, with us today, uh, sort of a champion of our project. Uh, his name is Mr. Aaron Duda. And if you don't know him, uh, he has uh, been around, been around for about 35 years, uh, working different uh, innovative projects. Uh, he, he's considered an explorer, innovator, and entrepreneur, uh, worked in the public and private sector, including on, on Wall Street. Uh, he's prolific in a lot of ways. Uh, for those of you who know Aaron, uh, he's got a, pro a lot of prolific interests. I say, uh, ranging from Indian motorcycles uh, to Led Zeppelin. So he's he he is a man man of the world, so to speak. Uh, currently, he's the chairman and CEO of Ambika Capital. And I, I met Aaron about uh, eight or nine months ago uh, at a blockchain conference where he was working with a project that really inspired me, uh, inspired our team to continue. Uh, down our vet coin route uh, that's called Shikonomy. Um So we're we're uh, we're glad to have Aaron here today. And like I said, there's just a conversation. Uh, we're going to talk about the value of vet coin, and uh, I'll hand it over to Aaron uh, for some uh, overall comments. Uh, for those of you that know, well, let me introduce myself as well. So my name is Aaron Bazin. The other Aaron, I've got two A's in my name. He's got one. Uh, so that's a, that's the a distinction. So you ask Aaron a question, you may want to say Aaron, Aaron two A's, Aaron one A, whatever you, whatever you want to do. But uh, I, I've been in the mil I was in the military about uh, 21 years, uh, served as an infantry officer, um, served in uh, my last 10 years as strategist at, at different four-star commands, um, and served in Iraq, Afghanistan, Kuwait, Qatar, yada, yada, yada. And uh, done a lot, and then uh, went to uh, currently serving at uh, Special Operations Command in Tampa as an Air Force civilian. So I'm out retired in 2018, um, and now I live in Tampa, Florida. So those are those are us. Uh, the other member of the team that's on uh, is Elmer Francisco. He is a uh, uh, our CEO of uh, of Vetcoin and of Vetcoin Foundation. He is really the, the guy that's making it all work, making it all happen. Uh, making our vision come to life. So those are the three people on, uh, but I definitely want to hear from Aaron Duda first. And Aaron, if, I'll hand it over to you. If you could sort of give us the where you see things going overall and what do you think uh, is in store, uh, the value of the blockchain in general, value of Web 3.0 and that sort of thing. Okay. Sure. Uh, thank you, Aaron. Um, a little bit about um, myself um, and thank you for the nice introduction as well. Um, uh, you're right, actually, uh, Aaron with one A, talking to Aaron with two A's. Uh, we did meet a couple of months ago as uh, a good friend of mine and a colleague who had recently passed away, was a decorated soldier, patriot, and a professional. And through that discussion, we said, you know, we have to do something for our veterans. And having grown up in a military family, myself, and uh, for generations, actually, in many different countries, uh, that have been served. Uh, primarily for me, I've been in the U.S. and, and a U.S. citizen and, and uh, very proud to see uh, that we are doing things like this for our veterans. And where the topic came to light wasn't just around helping the veterans. It was really, I think, Aaron, you and I were at a, a crypto blockchain conference. And the discussion was, you know, how can we harness with all this activity and euphoria that's going on, in next generationally, how, you know, uh, not just our soldiers and our veterans, but people are looking at new ways of making money, new ways of looking at communities, new ways of supporting each other, and hence coming up with new business models that are much more easier to achieve today if one were to understand the components by which we build these new systems, and business systems, that is. And through that, the topic of DeFi comes up, the topic of blockchain comes up, the topic of crypto comes up. And as a whole, it's really about digital assets of the future. You know, Whether we are looking at treasury for little business, whether we're looking at ways to make money around uh, new ways of commerce, whether it's you know, looking at you know, creating new value around 
physical properties that we have today that's looking for a marketplace and buyers and sellers. And more importantly, doing it in a way with integrity, authenticity, and transparency. And when we deal with our veterans and when we deal with organizations as such, there's so many folks that are in the middle of servicing this community as with most other communities. And we felt, hey, you know, where we are today with the generational, you know, even when we were together, we saw a lot of other veterans at the conference, a lot of young people there, you know, they're crypto trading well, you know, and they're looking at, you know, yield farming and all these new language that, you know, very difficult to understand for the average layman on the street, uh, and let alone a veteran, you know, who may not have exposure to harness things like that. So I think it, one thing we have to put in context is that there's a way how money is being talked about very differently than in the past, okay? There's a way how businesses are being initiated, created, operated, and grown digitally all over the world it, that is very different than just doing e-commerce or internet or things that we would call web 2.0 or what have you, technology-wise. Uh, and there's a whole new way of looking at, you know, how do we actually service the true needs of the end customer? And in your case, the end customer became the veteran. And, and when, as you described to me how to harness some of these things, I said, hey, you know, if we were to take advantage of things like tokenization or fractionalization, or this new emerging thing called NFT, you know, there may be, a, may be a way we can actually utilize these tools and toolkits to think about how do we actually organize ourselves differently than traditional organizations who are trying to help the veterans. And we recognize there's that's a very important and, and a top of mind issue for a lot of organizations who provide jobs to veterans, who provide training, skills, retooling, who provides, you know, everything from mental health and wellness type services, you know, but whatever happens, you know, you enlighten me by the fact with all those great things that are going on, we still have one in 10 veterans, you know, who are at risk. We still have veterans who have very hard time making transitions. And when you put it in the backdrop of veterans these days, we also have to recognize that, you know, many countries have been in conflict for many, many years. And especially our American veterans have been in conflict for a while now. Like yourself, you've been to many tours of duty in the last two decades, you know, and I look at you and some of the colleagues in VetCoin HQ as people who've actually, you know, successfully transcended that little chasm, if you will, back to civilian life and, and being able to adjust and using that success, now figuring out how do we actually help others come to this side? And then the question of others, who are they, right? There's different set of stakeholders. On one side, you have Fortune 100 companies, you know, who wants to do good things by hiring, by servicing, by, by creating, you know, programs for veterans. You have veterans organizations, you know, you have government organizations, and then you have, you know, uh, I would, what I call, would call my, my people organizations like, you know, my motorcycle buddies and others, you know, in the local BFA and things like that. And there's always something that's top of mind, but we continually hear, you know, it's not working or it should be different and so forth. So I think, you know, that's where uh, it made a lot of sense, Aaron, as you started to say to me, you know, what should we do? I said, you know, pick three things, three verbs that you want to do for the veterans, you know, and what would they be? And, and the rest, we can figure out. The technology is the easiest part of the equation of it, is how do we harness the community and truly and authentically give them hope that you guys are really genuinely trying to connect to them first. And if you can connect to them first in the community, then you earn the right to provide the services with trust and authenticity to that community. And that same community are also veterans who own businesses too who normally don't have access to banking services or customers or geographies, you know, they do what they do as best as they can do it, but it would also be good if we can do it with our community, service each other and show the success of that. And that will create a, a whole new groundswell by which people will see that success and redirect their focus around that veteran that needs. And the focus is what I asked you and your team to think through. And, and at, you know, three months later, or actually five months later, it's amazing where you 
you are. And I'm very proud of what you guys have accomplished. So in a, in, in a way, I think, you know, I think the technology and, and the, the digital and the crypto, all those are means to an end, but let's start with the end first. And that's where I think it's a good segue, Aaron, for you to really talk about what the initial impetus for veteran uh, Vetcoin was, you know, from that discussion with your colleagues after that meeting and, and what we've learned very quickly, okay, how to really connect to the veterans first and work back from that with what Elmer and others have brought to the game is that how do we actually drive a solution that matches that needs? So to you, my friend. No, thank you so much, Aaron. Yeah, I, that seems like a million years ago. And I compare <laughs> my knowledge on what the blockchain is and cryptocurrency crypto <laughs> back then. I think I've aged about 15 years in crypto. I mean, like it's, it's not, it's not, it's like a dog years or something like that, but based on what, how little I knew, knew then, how much more I know, but still I know I don't know enough, but uh, thank you so much for that. And, uh, that setting the context for us. Yeah, Vetcoin um, really started with really started with that meeting. We went back and, and we met and uh, Russ, Joey and I sort of like sat around the water cooler and we're like, hey, this is we know this is important. The blockchain is important. Web 3.0 is important. And it's all about from talking to Aaron, I learned that, hey, it's all about communities. It's about taking the community, moving it onto the blockchain and making something happen in a way that empowers the individual and not necessarily the big banking system or big institutions and things like that. And so that was really sort of how we start started framing the problem. And we started thinking about those three words that that Aaron mentioned. Um, so we knew that we knew that the consequences of not doing something were greater than doing something and, and not doing it right. We want to fail early, fail fast and get out there and, and get something started, get the community built and get it started. So we knew there were consequences to not taking action now. And as decisive people, we wanted to start and be decisive. So we started thinking again, like I said, about the about those three words that sort of uh, what we're going to focus on. And then we also, before I tell you that, also we started, we realized that what affects our fellow veterans affects us. So we were part of a team. We, we learned teamwork at a very early in our careers, and then we're thrown out, thrown out to the wolves. And so when you hear about statistics like Aaron talked about, but uh, like the homeless uh, veteran problem, 1.5 million homeless veterans out there. And then something we learned about just the other day, women veterans are the uh, highest and fastest growing uh, population of, of homeless uh, in the United States. So women veterans are sort of the silent silently serving, not not always out front, but they're always there. And now as more women are serving in combat roles, they are uh, taking on a lot more uh, from, from things like that, uh, with 44% of overall veterans having difficulty transitioning and about 20% having difficulty accessing capital. We realized, that, hey, this is something we've got to do. So what are our three words? And so we wrote about 100 different words on the board. We were like, is this right? Is that right? What, let's focus on first things first. And Aaron hit on it. It's really connecting the connecting the community, uh, not only connecting our, to our own communities that we all serve with. Uh, you know, for me, the 101st or or the different units, I, the uh, 11th ACR, the different units I've served with, but all the, our, our folks in there. So we want to build a team with that connected. And so we wanted to build bring in people that were from the army, the air force, the Navy and Marines. So we had a truly a joint team that, that wasn't, didn't exclude anyone. And we even uh, are, are looking at folks or looked at folks in the space force and the coast guard. And we wanted to include them as well. So we, it's all services, nothing, no stone left unturned. Um, then as we discussed what connect meant, it also meant connecting to uh, other nations services. So the British, you know, traditional, um, uh, the traditional sort of allies of the U.S., uh, Australia, uh, the U.K., and whatnot, but also the non-traditional ones that you may you may not think of, uh, like the Indian Army, the Pakistani Army, these veterans that served along with us, um, that I served with, and that are no longer, uh, that don't have even worse support systems than the veterans in the United States. So the connect, we started realizing that was our biggest challenge, was to connect uh, our our organization, our group of stakeholders together. Uh, so that that was the first word. The second word we thought of was really is take that community and do something with it. So once we started to build the community, we wanted to enable them on the blockchain. 
And we realized quickly that a lot of us are very new to the blockchain, including all the, all the, all the uh, co-founders for the most part. And we went out and found another co-founder, a young millennial uh, named Miggy uh, Tizcon, that was really uh, instrumental in helping us bring our knowledge from the current sort of uh, old old school think into the new into the blockchain uh, uh, in the blockchain mentality. So he really taught us and te- continues to teach us a lot, um, and that's where we really learned that hey, we need to transform. Or when we when we bring this, we connect them. We need to enable them. The next thing we need to do is transform the community. So those were our three words we came up with: is connect, enable, and transform. And the transform part is the harder part. It's further further down the line. Uh, but it is really recognized. It, it goes back to not only educating and bringing veterans onto the blockchain, but goes to outreach and recognition. So one of the things that we want to do that's very important to us is to identify and recognize those veterans charities out there uh, every year. So as VetCoin builds up and VetCoin is being used, a portion of, of VetCoin uh, with every transaction goes to a secure, transparent wallet. And then every year that money gets voted on on where it goes and where it uh, goes to charities to help the community. And so that is really the, uh, uh, the vision of what Bitcoin is. Now we've built some other things into it. Um, we've, we think that an app is the way to go. So we have an easy way you can download an app with the wallet on it. Uh, they can easily transfer funds back and forth that you can easily find veteran owned businesses near you or, or businesses that offer veterans discounts and like a map, like a Google map sort of function, like, Hey, Within a mile of me, there's five restaurants that all have a 10% discount and, oh, this is a veteran-owned business, let me go there. Something that doesn't exist before. And the deeper we go into it, you would think that there's huge uh, organizations that are coordinating all the veterans uh, businesses out there. There's, there really isn't. There's only 20 states that have veterans chambers of commerce that we've talked to and have been able to identify, uh, but they're growing. These, these numbers are growing as veterans, as more and more veterans enter uh, enter retirement or end their service as uh, things sort of wind down and, and uh, or as th- things have wound down in Iraq and Afghanistan. Uh, so with all that, with all that said, um, that's really, if I could describe what that, what we're trying to do is really is that connect, enable and transform piece. That's really our mantra. And that's what we're really going, going after. Now our, our, again, we realize that it's the community. So we see ourselves as sort of the, the caretakers of the community but we, uh, we intend to fully uh, make, make this a community effort. So a grassroots effort where veterans owned businesses have a place to operate that's safe and secure, and that we can help them bring them onto the blockchain as well as individuals as well. Uh, so what do we visualize? We visualize uh, in the next uh, six months where our goal is, is to get 30,000 uh, holders of Vetcoin and then to really take that uh, to the next level with the app so that people can interact with that coin and use it and the community can really connect together. We think that once that can happen, uh, we think we'll have something going here. So anything that any of you all can do to get the word out about that coin, uh, we really appreciate it right now. The only thing that the biggest obstacle we have is getting the word out and, and we've, we're using our networks, we're spreading the word, but anything that you can do to help us out with that would be a, a huge, uh, uh, a huge help to us. So if you believe in our mission, if you believe in us, then please, uh, please help, uh, help spread the word. Um, so I did want to talk, Aaron, if you, if you're comfortable talking about Bud a little bit. Um, so every year we plan on giving the Bud Burrell award to the, to the veterans charity that's doing the most that we've identified. And, and Aaron, can you describe a little bit about Bud? Your story it was, uh, inspired us and sort of, he's sort of our, uh, our spirit animal going forward for this thing. So can you tell us a little bit about Bud and your, your time with him? Uh, You know, Bud Austin Burrell. I mean, if there's one word I could say, you know, about Bud is just uh, amazing. Okay. The, the amazing one word is amazing and dedicated patriot always, always kept true to the history of the country, the values of the country and his upper upbringing of, you know, what is it to be a consummate professional, an officer, and a gentleman? And to me, it was additionally, I got to enjoy a lot more than that. His mentorship, his brotherhood, and his friendship. And he became a partner of mine a couple of years ago. And, and what he always, you know, 
stayed true to at the core was his authentic view. Okay. And I was always say, bud, you're just a good, you know, uh, not even a boy scout, a Eagle scout. Okay. And, you know, he always pointed out, you know, wrong versus right. Um, sometimes to his demise. Okay. Bud was a, a late sixties. I believe it was 67 graduate at West Point. And soon thereafter, uh, in general finance management degree, he was sent over to Vietnam, a uh, special unit as a paymaster for uh, dealing with a lot of the conflict related issues at that time. After which, when he got out of the service, he went straight to Wall Street. And he was an innovator in creating new product and structures there. After which he left to go try out several entrepreneurial things. And in between, he's struggled and survived many health issues that he had gone through, you know, uh, during the conflict of Vietnam and all the great services that we could offer our veterans, he took advantage of to sometimes to his demise, okay, and cured himself from all the different things that he picked up, you know, whether it was ill health and uh, whether it was, you know, things that really dilapidated him, you know, over time, which focused him on really thinking about health and wellness and longevity because he himself was his own victim of curing, which led him into the biotech industry. And he became a CEO of several companies in that industry to focus on how do you actually address, you know, health and wellness in a whole new different realm from the core of science, from the core of technology, from the core of commercialization, really at the core of cure and prevention. And along the way, he has great stories, like he became a jiu-jitsu champion of the world and et cetera, et cetera. And just shows coming from that environment, you know, going through the cycles of a system around him that really wasn't set up to nurture veterans in the way. He always pulled himself to the next zone and led by example. And that same feeling and zest permeated with Bud wherever he walked. You know, he was a man of stories wonderful stories that were real stories, that were direct stories, that was stories with no regret, no shame, that was stories that celebrated, stories that motivated, and stories that give me the goosebumps thinking about him right now, okay? And it basically led me to believe in many ways, you know, if we could ever do something, the next generation of buds, who are my nephews and my nieces who've served in Afghanistan and other places in the last 10, 15 years, you know, they don't have those stories. They have hardships, they have adjustments, those three words. I live it, I see it. Aaron, you and your colleagues see it even more so than I do. You've been successful just like Bud in many cases, you know, crossing that, that you know, that barrier to the real world again, or the world again in general, I shouldn't say the real world. Um, and so, so that's when, I, when you and I first got together, I said, there's gotta be a way not to memorialize Bud, to memorialize the issue that he believed in always. How can we make it better for people who serve our nation and many nations to come back home with gratitude, with respect, and with a degree of sincerity and security by the, the, what they have served for, that we can welcome them back than just being their family and their friends, we can welcome them back as a nation to care for them in the way they really need to. And we have to stop talking about what doesn't work. At some point, we have to take the leadership and create what should work. And that's really what motivated me in the, my discussion with you, Aaron, you know, in picking those three words. And I'm so thoughtful and thankful about uh, without even asking how you folks really thought about the scholarship in his name. And I think it's a, it's a great way and a great stage and a great platform to motivate, to inspire, and to celebrate the great veterans of the world. You know, and whether, you know, in the name of Bud, but in the name of what Bud stood for is what he would have expected me to say. You know, what is the mission here? The mission, Aaron, is to take care of our brothers and sisters. That's what he always said. That's right. Yeah. No, thank you. Thank you. Aaron. I really appreciate that. We, so one thing that we felt strongly about as well is sort of trying to capture some of the core values. Um, and you don't see that with a lot of cryptocurrencies out there of what, 
what we think we stand for and put that out there on our website, along with our faces, our names, our, our reputations, everything is on the line, right? Um, but some of the things well, that Bud represented that's and selflessness, important. that's what we wanted to put out there, so. That's why I think it was important. I think you convinced me very quickly because I was pretty rough on you, right? And uh, <laughs> I remember, and I said, look, if it's, if it's kind of like what I'm doing with Bermuda and stuff, it's, you know, it's like, you know, it's made by the people, for the people, for the rest of the world to enjoy. Mm -hmm. So this had to be done by veterans, for veterans, to invite the world to help, okay? And that's the mission you went on. And when I look at the team you put together, it is every branch of service, okay? It also has people like myself, others, you know, from business and other environments, which is part of the world, okay? Connecting to us. And then this whole world of people out there who actually do care about the issue, but they may not be able to understand who is the right people to trust, right? And truth be told, there's been a lot of organizations who've tried to do this before. There's been scandals, there's been this, there's been that, but you really don't hear about a leading gold standard, branded, trusted, you know, whether we call it, want to call it military grade cybersecurity, or in essence, the code of honor, ethics and conduct. Mm -hmm. In the, you know, from a human level, from a professional level. And I think you folks have probably created the first manifestation of that brand and that promise, you know, and this is the first step, you know, of many to come, but it had to be the right step from trust and authenticity first. And then when you put it into the crypto marketplace, it's the wild west, right? So you have to be <laughs> even more so, <laughs> you know, amplify that trust and transparency with who we are, what we do, and why we do it. And this is our mission and our purpose, okay, through your actions. And that's what I see you folks are doing right now. And then when I put it in the context of, you know, how you enable in, and do those three words, I think the first step was to reach out. And when you have a team like this, you're so connected to so many different networks. Is every individual of this team is recognized as a hero and a mentor to somebody out there, some group of people or an influencer, you know, but they're all decorated officer, gentlemen, you know, whether enlisted or not, okay? That lady, however you wanna say it, they're exemplary consummate professionals at the end of the day, okay? And that was what's lacking, was what was lacking before I met you folks and before you guys did this, is that degree of professionalism the ethics, the conduct, and the integrity to say, we will take this thing on and we will make this our mission and we will not stop till we connect to the communities, not just here amongst our little group, but if we do this right, it'll feed on itself and then we will take advantage of the digital world, okay? Then the digital world becomes a tool for us to expand that mission quickly, transcend the geographies, the time, and the cultures and the language, because at the core, what the veterans that you imply, you know, embedded in me or, you know, help me appreciate, at the core, there's a separate feeling that, that you all share amongst each other, that very difficult for people who haven't gone through that to understand, right? So how do we connect to that feeling, right? Not that we're doing crypto and we can make you money, but it's really, even if you put that out, how do we get to that homeless person? What's the way to get to that person and lift that brother or sister up? How do we convince them that this is one of the tools and maybe this could be another tool that can actually give them what they wanted that they didn't know existed, that can give them what they wanted that didn't, they didn't get that with what existed couldn't provide them. So there's, there's a tall mission here, right? And to do that, I think that required a couple of steps. One was understanding what is this world? And you guys did a fast cycle PhD in that in the last three months from crypto 101 to DeFi to tokenization to payment systems to rails to you know which blockchain to use to is there a way to generate yield and liquidity and farming? Mm -hmm. You know, that's big thinking. That's big doing too, right? And that led to yourself to expand those relationships to a different front professional, which is the ecosystem of players, right? And that's how Elmer and others came into the process. Mm -hmm. They, hey, we want to do this. Okay, this is how we can do this. This is how we can help. 
And the complement of the two worlds here is what leads us here to Vetcoin HQ. The next step, I also said it can't be owned by one entity. It has to be for the veterans, by the veterans, to the veterans. So, so that requires a business model, whether it's a business model or not, it's a model for interaction, okay? So that's when you know, people started coming up with new ways of expressing you know, value like NFT. So what does that mean, right? Is that a token, what does that mean? How do I make money from those things? And then come up with things like DAO, distributed autonomous organizations, or DeFi, or distributed finance. So all of these things need to be understood. And you guys went out and understood those things to say, okay, if we're going to do something like this, we're going to also create this for the new world. We're not going to address the old world problem. That's a given. We have to do that. But there's a new world of problems that we haven't even seen that haven't even shown itself because we haven't even connected to those people yet. When we do, then we're going to co-create and collaborate with that community. They will tell us what they need. We will be in service to them. Because, and in order to do that, we can't be at the center controlling it, right? So that's where we have to think about mm -hmm. how do you know, we get it started? That's the enablement part. How do we enable the veterans so they can do it for themselves and so on and so on, replicate that model with the governance, with the treasury, with the budgets, with the organization, we're gonna enable them. So the first step there for this team was to learn and learn with humility. The second step was take that feeling, enhance that and project that to the communities to get their trust. So they can actually reinvigorate themselves that they can actually give you a chance in the vision that you've put together to enable them. Because you've already connected, they know who you are. They know what you're doing. They know your three words. How could you get them to try you out, okay? Because it's not just a veteran issue, because to them it's a life issue, right? I wake up in the morning, what do I do today? When I was in the service, I knew what I had to do, okay? Whether I designed that schedule myself or, or somebody told me I had to do that. But in the new world, I'm lost when I make that transition. I don't have a home, or I may have a home. I may not have a job that can keep me in the home. Or I may be successful, but I wanna give some of my success back to my community. Who do I trust that'll go to the right hands, right? So those are the fundamental, I would say, not existential, but basic questions, right? That has to be answered. That has to be delivered to, to the actions. And I think there's, that's why the steps from connect to enable where you are right now is very important as foundation and the cornerstone of trust, transparency, and authenticity for that community. Once you flywheel that community, I think we'll, transformation will be a natural organic process. That community will, will create the, or identify the problems that need to be resolved. They will hopefully, if they're part of that, and they have a business or they have an interest or they have an asset or they have a motivation, they will contribute that to that problem set. And that's the next step of high wheeling in the community. So I think you're a very exciting place. Thanks, Aaron. No, those are inspirational words. I mean, we, we really, um, everyone we've talked to you said, I, I don't necessarily understand it, but I like the idea. Even, even if they don't understand it, they wanna be involved. They see where our hearts are and they see where our passions are and they know that we're, we can be trusted to take this to the next level, but they don't, what people lack is the understanding. And so what we've sort of come to realize in the past, uh, past few weeks actually, is we're gonna have to do a lot of, edu there's gonna be a lot of education piece to this and being sort of teachers and, but also continuing to learn, knowing that we, the only thing we know is we don't know any, we don't know everything, right? So we have to continue to learn because the space is constantly changing. But then we have to educate our brothers and sisters and help them feel comfortable that they can trust trust this trust the system and see what it's all about. And in my mind, cryptocurrency or the blockchain is all about taking trust and digitizing it, making trust something that is trans, uh, transparent and verifiable and mutable. And if we can show them and convince them, hey, this is something of value 
and something that they can use and help their lives and help make other people's lives better, then, then we've got something going. So I, I really appreciate your time. Uh, I know you're very busy. Um, and so I appreciate your time and coming Never to talk busy to us today. This. Never too busy. Thanks. For this. Thanks, Aaron. Yeah. But hey, let so, me ask you a question, yeah. Aaron. I think it's important for people to know to know this uh, around the evolution of Bitcoin. You know, on the learning topic, what have you learned or the team has learned in the last four months entering this space? Because I think that in itself is a good jewel of knowledge to share as well. So I, I not to put you I on the found, spot, but I know you so have no, the no, answer. no, no. So I found a couple. Uh, so I found a couple mentors, yourself included. But it's always to know, to be constantly looking for new information. Some of the best information I've got are YouTube videos. Other information, best I've got is a conversation with someone over coffee. So it's a continual thirst for knowledge and exploring to sort of get you, get you somewhere in the right place. And then it's very early on, uh, I had an a, a expert, expert from Silicon Valley. I called her an expert. I'm like, hey, I'm glad I have an expert like you. And she's like, no, no, no. No one's an expert in the space. This is brand new. And you're at the cutting edge of something there are no experts everyone's stumbling around in the dark and for me that was very eye-opening like hey we're at, we're really at a new start something new here and we can invent and create the expertise or create the knowledge create the understanding that we want uh to get out of this and so basically it was like hey it's okay to not know not know everything you need you need to just continue to learn and so there's a constant uh there's a constant uh, sort of search, thirst for knowledge, search for knowledge, and then finding the right person that one, maybe one person knows about DeFi, maybe one person knows about coding and finding the right people and connecting the dots. And that, that's what little I've learned so far is that I know I have more to learn. Well, well, Colonel, one thing I must say, okay, uh, what I've observed you and the team is that you've defied all chain of command, okay? <laughs> Because it's the humility, what you express, how you express the humbleness, okay, of the cause and the commitment. And I think the other thing I saw, uh, you know, I, as, I, as you've shared all the telegram, you know, as being in the community and so forth, which you guys observing every once in a while, I pipe in to help. Um, it's the courage. We have to have the courage to take the step forward. and. Yeah, I think intrinsic to, you know, to being who you are, you know, being in service and leading in command at all levels, all of you, that's the discipline, the vigor and the rigor and the commitment of the mission is what you've captured here, even in how you express it in the, you know, in your value proposition, the plan, the roadmap. You know, there are some chosen military words inside of there. And I know they're on purpose at the same time, I think if you didn't put something up there, we would never have a start. Mm -hmm. And we went into this thing knowing that we were not only going to play to start, or we, we were going to play to help. Whether it was successful or not, at least it got started and it would grow on itself. And I, I see that now. And as I travel the world and talk to the other family members and friends and others who've just myself, like myself, connected to the issues of veterans. It's a global phenomenon, you know, and there's no one else I see in the world doing what your team is doing, okay? So it also says that whatever you do, the more successful you are in developing through that level of humility to, you know, earn the trust of people is top of mind. It's, that is your brand. And because that is your brand, your service delivery and your execution has to be impeccable, right? So that's why when sometimes you talk about those numbers, 30,000, 60,000, in a normal community of crypto and DeFi and digital, and those are small numbers because everybody talks about huge billions and hundreds, you know, but you have a different mission here. You're building the foundation by which the world can connect, the world of veterans. And the world of veterans, the epicenter of who? Their families, their friends, their employers, their employees. So from that one person that you touch, you can very quickly open up an ecosystem and gain the reservoir of trust and goodwill through that one person. Right? And that's your market now. And how you get there 
it's, I think, going to be in the same pace and the same kind of, I would say, thoughtful, calculated, strategic steps. As a strategist yourself, yeah. you know, it has to be thoughtful. It has to be executable mm. because there's a lot of talk out there, but you guys are walking the walk every single day. And that's what I thought that the greatest learning here was the formation of the team against the market opportunity to put some business language into it, right? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So um, that's something I think a lot of people don't have the courage to embrace. And if we are going to connect with a lot of veterans, I think we need to talk about empowerment to get people to take that first step and, and recognize that they're not out alone. What, what Vetcoin is doing, Vetcoin HQ for the time being, Vetcoin as it propagates to the rest of the universe over time, is there is a lot of us behind that one person. We just have to let that one person know there is. And hopefully the rest will be history. That's right. Thank, thank you so much again, Aaron. I mean, I, every time I talk to you again, like I said, I'm, I'm inspired and energized. And, and it's great. I, I love it. Thank you so much. And I, I hope those folks that, are, that chime in today uh, can feel that, can understand that and see, have learned a little bit about where, who we are and what we are and what we all stand for um, and what we're, what we're going to do together. I, I think that the biggest thing you know, we all have moments of doubts and started something up like this. And I, I have, I have had my own as well. Uh, but I realized that there's no way that we could fail because we are, our hearts are in the right place. Um, so if we keep, stay true to our core values, stay true to our mission and keep that in mind, there's nothing that's going to keep us from helping veterans. And if we help one or two or three, then I, I'll be, I'll be ha happy if we can help scale that up and help hundreds and help thousands then uh, that will be that will be all that we've all that we we intend this to be and more um so thank you for your time and i really appreciate it like i said and um i i, I don't know where do we want to go from here elmer is that i think that's about all the time we have is there anything else uh that you want to cover or talk about elmer to, to close this out oh actually this is an Aaron show so, uh, <laughs> Elmer, you. Elmer, this is your gig, man. <laughs> Thank you, Elmer, for setting everything up. We really appreciate it. flawless uh, execution. So, appreciate appreciate all the hard work for you and your team. For the team, of course. Well, great. Thanks, thanks for everybody. Thanks to, again to everyone, and uh, please check us out uh, at vetcoinhq.com. We've got a duly designed website. Um, that looks pretty slick. And so we're getting our, uh, get all of our ducks in a row and starting, things are starting to look really good. And please check out our website if you want to get involved with us, uh, all the information is there that, that you need. So thanks for your time out there and we'll, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Thank you.